for coming to the second installment of Illuminate Special Speakers. Um, these are the guys from Beatmaking Lab. This is Pierce Freelon, Steven, aka Apple Juice Kid, Salim, aka Kid Ethnic, um, and they run Beatmaking Lab. Uh, so I won't talk too long because everything sounds better coming out of their mouths and their music. Um, but the way we got connected and Beat Making Lab got started is Pierce and Steven teach a class at UNC called Beat Making Lab. So they teach kids there how to make electronic music and hip hop beats, which is awesome by itself. But they were like, why stop with these dang heads? Um, and so they went to the Congo and started teaching kids there. Uh, and they filmed the whole thing. Philippe Celine filled these amazing music videos of the whole process. Um, so PBS took notice, and they were like, hey, we want to help you do more of these, how can we help you? Um, so now they are backing the whole project. They were just in Senegal, and they're going to Fiji soon. Um, and I'm going to let them take it away. Thanks for being here. Thanks. One, two, one, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Um, to tell me something that they love about working here at McKinney. Anybody, don't be bashful. No, no, I need you to come up to the front. Come up to the front. We have a volunteer, a lady in the white shirt, cool looking flip flops, join us. Okay. Okay. It's very simple. It's very simple. You know what I'm saying for this part. Alright, so I just need you to in a loud voice to say what you like about working here, okay? I'll tell you when. Uh, the people. Uh, one more time. I love the people. Round of applause, please. You did a great job. I need another volunteer. I need another volunteer. I love the people. Someone from this side. Someone from this side. Okay, jean jacket, hoop earrings. Come down to the front. You've been selected. What do you love about working here at McKinney? Hold on. Hold on. I love the people. Free food. <laughs> Free food with people, we've got a lot of good stuff. I love the people. Free food. One, two, three. Cool people. Free food. Here we go. Free food. Cool people. Free food. Free food. Cool. I love the people. Free food. Free food. Cool. I love the people. Free food. Check it out, and we're gonna rock it out like that. 
Chitty. What else? Chitty. Cool. <laughs> Thank you. All right. <laughs> so that was uh, our attempt at making a beat on the spot. We were like, why don't we just start making a beat? Uh, see if we can start the the program with a little bit of a uh, hands-on example. So thank uh, another round of applause for our lovely volunteers. For contributing. So, um, and thank you, Kelly, for the wonderful introduction. Again, my name is Pierce Freelon. This is Apple Juice Kid. Uh, we started the beat making lab. Uh, actually, Apple Juice um, and the chair of our department started the beat making lab initially as a class in the music department at UNC. And now we've been all over the world and McKinney has been very helpful and an inspiring entity in our journey. And um, we uh, want to show you guys a couple of video clips and really just answer any questions you might have uh, about what we do. We'll tell you a little bit about our background. But again, uh, the voices of the youth that we work with around the world are much more powerful than uh, our voices will ever be. So we're kind of going to let the art speak for itself a little bit, show you a little bit of the work we've been doing and uh, we'll be here to provide a little context for, for you guys. We went to Democratic Republic of Congo and a lot of people ask, well, why Congo? What, what were you doing in the Congo? It was a, a serendipitous thing where we had a colleague in the music department that uh, was part of a wonderful nonprofit there called Yole Africa. And Juice, do you want to tell them a little bit about like what Yole is and what they do in Goma and then we'll play the video? Yeah, so Yole Africa is a community arts center in Goma, Congo, in East Africa. Goma, uh, according to Time magazine, is the most dangerous city in the world um, because of the combination of war and natural disaster. Um, and so there's this shining light in the middle, midst of rubble. It really is a town full of rubble from the volcano that erupted there 10 years ago that has still not been uh, touched since the rubble landed. So there's this one center called Yole Africa and it's this really shining light in the midst of a lot of NGOs dealing with you know the crisis that's going on there. Um, they decided to make a film program where every year they have a film festival and brought in the equipment for the youth in the community to make films to share their stories. So we arrived on the 10th anniversary of um, their film festival and added the musical component, added the electronic music studio where we could sample the traditional instruments and combine it with the modern hip hop and electronica. And it was our first experiment taking the curriculum outside of UNC and into the field. And uh, we brought Salim with us. We crowdsourced uh, through an Indiegogo campaign the money along with a little help from the university and basically produced one three minute video that uh, this is a slightly different version than our original video. Oh, this is the music video, oh, okay. Well, there was a video that you can see on our site that uh, is what uh, was posted on Good, good.is, and then PBS saw it, and then now that's why our lives are basically devoted to this and why we're in front of you now. So. We're going to show you the music video that was uh, produced by the youth in Goma, Congo, called Cho Cho Cho. That was produced by McKinney. Can you feel me? 
Um, you know, Stephen mentioned National Geographic calling Goma one of the most dangerous cities. I mean, um, I think one of the beautiful things uh, with this video is that um, the youth are telling their own story and it's not being told by uh, a company or a corporation or a media group coming in and kind of telling them what's up. If you were to watch that video, you see vibrancy, you see emotion, and, and you can't, you don't understand the lyrics, but the reoccurring theme in that song was Niwakati which is a Swahili term that means the time is now. So they, they almost every verse, uh, they, they say niwakati, and they're talking about everything from, uh, you know, paving the roads to coming together as a community to having fun. And, and so um, I think that that is a really important context, you know, since you don't speak Swahili. But I'm going to teach you some Swahili right now. Uh, if you ever find yourself in Goma, East, East Africa, um, in Goma, Congo, and someone yells, Cho, 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 Cho! Your response should be, Cho, Cho, Cho! Let's try it out. Cho, 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 Cho! Cho, 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 Cho! Okay, so your Cho is like Cho. That's a very, that's a very, you know, that's not a Durham Cho. If you come up in there, they can be like, oh, you must be from Gary or something. Alright, we want to come with that Durham Cho. Cho, 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 Cho! Thank you, thank you. So, um, yeah, so let me turn off this reverb. One, oh, that's better. All right, um, so Goma Congo was our first beat making lab. Uh, again, Stephen mentioned that it was crowdsourced. It was just a, kind of a grassroots initiative that we put together. Uh, and from Congo, uh, we went to uh, Portobello, Panama. Uh, we just landed from Dakar, Senegal, and we're headed to Suva, Fiji next. And the model is the same. We find a nonprofit institution to partner with, and we build a, a music studio in collaboration with youth musicians in those communities. And um, uh, McKinney was very, very helpful. We came in kind of humbly asking to, for you to sprinkle some mojo upon us. And uh, Josh and Kelly, and uh, what was the photographer assistant's name? Emily. Emily, is she here? Emily, no? OK, so when you look at the very beginning of our, of our videos, there's a uh, this really interesting uh, graphic of a, of a laptop, speakers, headphones, and a microphone crawling out of a backpack in a stop-motion uh, scene. 
And we have uh, Josh and, and Kelly and Emily to thank for that. So thank you so much for helping us out. And we hope to continue working with you. Um, so we're actually, uh, we, we did, we're talking uh, while Cho 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 is playing. We want to premiere an exclusive song with you guys. So we're, our model now is to release episodes every Wednesday. Um, and so we have a, our deal with PBS is we have a digital show with them. We release episodes every Wednesday. This is an unreleased world premiere episode that we're debuting here for you guys in McKinney. This is the song that we did in Panama. You ready? Yeah. Are you excited? Yeah. All right, Celine. Okay, yeah, sure. So uh, the festival, we were there in Panama during something called the Festival de los Diablos y Congos. Now, there are a lot of Diablos in this audience. Um, Diablos, <laughs> as you'll hear from this guy, Diablos, it's, it's a really interesting song about, about a history of enslavement. And so Diablos mean, is, represents white people. Congos represent uh, African and indigenous people. So it's really, at first, especially for an American where you know, race issues are very sensitive, weird to see like these guys in these devil costumes carrying whips. And if you get too close to them, psh, they'll whip you. And that, that's just part of this ritual, and, and they have these whistles, and they blow, it makes the Diablos uh, freeze, and the Congos, which are these beautifully dressed, you'll see them, there's the women in the beautiful dresses, there's the, the brother with the golden paint on his face, they represent the uh, African and indigenous people who were enslaved by the um, uh, Spanish uh, conquerors and colonists and slaveholders. So that is the cultural context for this a very important local festival, this important local heritage. That was going on while we were doing the beat making lab. So our students um, composed a song that was inspired by the Diablos Festival, and they made an incredible beat, made some incredible lyrics, and you'll see a lot of the images from this festival, um, and we call it Diablos. They call it Diablos. <laughs> que cuando el diablo venía, ellos le jugaban la pacheca y le salían. Y las mujeres cantaban, diablo, tú no puedes ir conmigo, porque él hasta las mujeres se quería llevar, entonces sacaban una cruz. Ay, diablo, tú no puedes ir conmigo. It was 
funny, as we were playing the video, Salim leans over, he's like, make sure everyone knows this is a rough cut. <laughs> it's like the best rough cut I've ever seen. This perfectionist man. Um, but yeah, so uh, th those are two examples of the music, of the type of music that we're creating in these beat making labs. Uh, in Senegal, uh, we were with an all women's group uh, creating songs about um, local, uh, well, health related issues. Um, but it was our first time working with all women. Um, and in, in Fiji's next, we'll be leaving in, in uh, May to do our Fiji beat making lab. So that's just a, you know again a really brief overview of what we're do of um, you know what we're doing kind of how we got here and um, you know we're really interested in, in growing and hope McKinney will play a role in that. Do you want to say any? Yeah, in addition to the show wrapper, the stop motion graphics of the things coming out of the backpack, uh, Josh also did the logo, which we're really grateful for. So um, our original logo was. Wet. Really not. <laughs> I mean, he really took us outside the box and uh, gave us something that we would never consider. And just um, everyone we work with here at McKinney has been really, really nice just to let go of uh, any ideas we have and just entrust <laughs> into, into what you all are good at. So it's been a real fun experience for us. Uh, does anyone have any questions about what we do? Or? I should have mentioned a few things in my introduction. Um, when these guys go to these countries, it's just they have no idea what they're going to shoot. They have a vague idea of who's going to be there, of what facilities might be open to them. But you know, they're there for 10 days, and they're creating all of this on the spot. And it's just the three of them producing it. Steven does all the beats. Pierce is getting everybody together and figuring out the story. Um, Salim is shooting and editing. Amazing footage all by himself. So these guys just bleed creativity, not just um, in beat making lab. Um, they have so many side projects going on. It's part of who they are. Um, and they seem to really believe in creativity as an agent for change. Would you guys say that's Could you talk a little bit about that, about why creativity is so important for progress and a different perspective? Yeah. Um... So the name of our company is Artivism, which is the combination of art and activism. And uh, Pierce and I have been musicians professionally our whole life. Uh, myself as a drummer, um, and now as a producer, and Pierce as a vocalist. And really, when we came together, the, the thing that made us want to become partners in this uh, Artivism company was the desire to have social good or social impact to be a part of our art. And um, that was what was worthwhile us pouring everything into. Um, so it was really that common thread that spurred the beat making lab to go into the communities and not just be a university class. And um, the idea of all art can have a social impact twist or component or integration that's more than just 10% gets donated to a charity that is, is truly integrated. So. Uh, like the Tom shoes of the art world or something like that. So, you know, for us as musicians, uh, it was a natural fit to start with um, thinking outside the box and trying to create social impact with our music. And the Beat Making Lab was the first example of that. And it's been probably the most successful thing in our career as musicians, more than any album we've ever released. So it's been um, very, very gratifying for us. And, um, so one, one of the things, I think Salim, you were talking about this, that was really intriguing to me was your conversation that you had with some of the youth in Congo about social media. Could you talk a little bit about that? I was sure. Um, do you have any specific? Well, just, just when you were kind of teaching the class on blogging and the kid asked you that question. Oh, man. So we just had the coolest thing happen. Okay. <laughs> I've actually I've told you about this. Okay. Oh, I'm just super excited about it. While I was in Congo, um, they asked if I could teach a class on social media and blogging, um, which is super basics. Um, and one of the students I had, it was his first time starting a blog, and he just won this, this award from a Mondo blog, which is like a French, it's a really big francophone blog association. And the prize for this, this is, this is the part that blows my mind, the prize for this was he got a ticket to a conference in Senegal. So we were in Congo like a year ago, and we land in Senegal, 
and this kid Facebooks me, he's like, hey, I won a prize for my blog and I'm in Senegal. And we're like, we are too. Um, so that's been really cool, actually, yeah, so, so I think what we were talking about that day was, um, you know, the, uh, when we were working with, um, with some of these youth in Goma, we did this, this, uh, it's, it's like, actually I get emotional just talking about it. The, uh, we did this, this, this workshop where, like I said, we were starting people up with, with blogging and, you know, we don't, we don't really have internet or even electricity most of the time. So I just kind of like set them up with some tumblers um, so they could email in from their phones, um, posts about their lives. And, uh, you know, one day, we, so we, they, they could ask me any questions and one, one of the kids was like, um, Salim teacher, what do we do if uh, something that we write, so I'm sorry, no, I'm sorry. First he said, Salim teacher, is it always good to tell the truth? And I was like, well, I mean, what specifically do you mean? And he was like, should we tell the truth even if someone may hurt us or our families for telling it, right? And so we had this really long discussion where we went into to possible techniques. I mean, I was blown away, you know? Um, and we went into possible techniques for doing that. I mean, they, they have to deal with this kind of stuff all the time as, as with anything they create, with their music, because lots of their stuff is political. We talked about, you know, the, the idea of using characters and, you know, the history of using sarcasm in writing as a way to kind of say things without saying it directly. Um, I think the big thing for me from that was, I mean, for me, when you go someplace with an idea, you can't really go in, at least from my, my point of view, you can't go in saying, I'm going to accomplish this known thing, and it's going to be good. I mean, or some people can't. I can't. I'm not good enough. And I've just been totally shocked with everywhere we go um, at the ways the kids find to make good out of the tools um, that we collaborate on. And I mean, I think, you know, this is something we've talked about a lot, you know, the, the um, just kind of the, the, we've been including them a lot more in, in the process, you know, with that, that first video, was me popping in with a camera and shooting. Um, Diablos, this kid was like, wait a minute, Salim, that's not the best idea. The best idea is for it to be shot at night with me surrounded by my friends dressed as devils. And I was like, that is the best idea. So it's gotten a lot more collaborative. Um, and yeah, it's just, I mean, the more we travel, the, I feel like the more rewarding it's been, the more we've learned. and. And hopefully we can apply that stuff as we're moving around. I'll just carry around the microphone if you guys have questions. Actually, I don't. Sorry. Sorry. This is my first time hosting. <laughs> yeah. Speak up. Um, what's been the lasting impact um, from the beat making labs as you've left like the Congo and Senegal? We talk a bit about the impact of the Yeah, that's, a lot of it is still uh, happening. Like Congo was <clears throat> less than a year ago. It was uh, probably nine, ten months ago. And, uh, you know, we just left Panama in February. Um, so some lasting impact. You know, one of uh, the specific one that Salim mentioned is he helped a kid start a blog. And, um, you know, he's able to uh, not only express himself through that medium, but his, his friends and colleagues uh, back in Goma are able to continue to express themselves with the beat making medium. So when we say we bring a beat making lab somewhere, it's not just coming in, plopping in, doing something for 10 days and, and leaving, where uh, the equipment stays behind and we train trainers to train others. So one of the lasting impact, another lasting impact from Goma Congo is that a student who was peripheral when we were in the lab is now one of the main beat makers continuing to make beats in Congo. And he didn't learn that from us. He learned that from the students that we trained to teach him. Because when we got to Congo, there were like 120 kids who had signed up for the workshop. There's only really one and a half of us that can teach beat making well. I'm still learning beat making myself. So um, we had to whittle that group of 120 down to 16, and even that group of 16 down to four to six that Apple Juice worked with intensively, and I was working with the other kids on songwriting while Salim was doing um, uh, blogging and entrepreneurship workshops with another group of about eight to 10. 
So, um, you know, there's a limit to the number of students we can serve, but we try to be intentional in building a sustainable model by training trainers. And uh, on the last day of our workshop, we had everybody sign a contract that said, you will teach others in your community for a minimum of one year. And we hope that they'll continue beyond that, but we make them sign on paper that they'll do it at least for a year. And uh, we found that to be successful in Congo. We don't just teach the practical art of beat making, we teach entrepreneurship and some of the history, but the entrepreneurship part is really close to my heart and Pierce's heart, it's what we do for a living and it's really fun to um, depart all these secrets or what, you know, um, mysteries of how you make it in the music industry, uh, whether it's at UNC or abroad. Um, so we provide direct um, income generation for the nonprofits that we work with. Uh, we have two songs per lab, which will be on a compilation CD sold at every Whole Foods in America. And uh, we also have licensing deals in place for some of the music uh, for the African Cup of Nations. The Congo songs went for that. Um, in Senegal, with the women's lab that we just came from, you know, each lab we get better and better. And um, there were just some amazing opportunities. We were in the the equivalent of like Jay Z and Andre Three Thousand Studio. <laughs> I mean, we were in like the top studios in Senegal, and the women were with us. And, you know, everything is all about these kids just getting um, organized and, and having as many opportunities as possible. So they're sustainable without our help, but we also are always thinking of ways to um, to uh, use our connections and opportunities to help them too. So that's. And like Pierce said, it's still very new and, and we are really interested in the impact um, that happens after we leave and we're trying to measure that better and better every lab we go to. Uh, just out of curiosity, on the Cho 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 video, how many languages did we hear there? It was French, Swahili, okay. There's a mix, yeah. It's mostly French and Swahili. There was a, a, an MC there that was Arabic, that spoke Arabic, and Avi Pierce was in English. But mostly French and Swahili. Okay, cool. And it's cool to see that happen together. And even within, within, um... Sorry, competing with the train. I love that train, by the way. <laughs> uh, a lot of, like, the first verse, and even if you watch our, our little three-minute documentary video, you know, the lines between French and Swahili in East Africa are like, you know, it's totally all of, over each other. So, um, yeah, but those are, the, those are the main languages of the country. There was, um, Salim was mention, mentioning, there's one kid that, that was speaking in King, King Rwanda, but, uh, yeah. Have you guys played the Pierce Brothers Festival in um, uh, the question was, how do we pick the places we go? Um, it's really, at this point, um, through strategic partnerships. So, uh, like I said, Goma was a very serendipitous thing where we had a colleague in the music department that, uh, whose husband founded Yole Africa. So that was a natural shoe-in. Uh, it was a similar case with Panama. Um, we had, a, a just, again, just a connection to the school there, which was La Escuelita del Ritmo. It's a, a free community uh, percussion school in um, uh, Portobello, Panama. In Senegal, it was, it was, a, it was a mix. Um, there was a nonprofit partner in uh, Speak Up Africa, who was previously focused particularly on malaria awareness, but also is beginning to branch out into other health-related issues. And then IntraHealth was another, actually, North Carolina-based nonprofit. Um, that uh, trains uh, global health workers. So they were like our institutional partners, but we also had a connection to Gotal, which was the all women's ensemble of beat makers, rappers, um, producers, and engineers, and singers. Uh, There's a group called Gotal, and um, we collaborated oh, in Senegal, you know, where it's like, there was a nonprofit in uh, a couple different places. There's one in Indonesia we were considering, we were considering Japan, but we chose Senegal, because in addition to the nonprofit partners, we also had the artists uh, available as well. So, um, you know, we cast a really wide net, reached out to all our personal contacts, and even put a few calls out to nonprofits that would be interested in hosting something like this. And the ones that were the most logistically feasible and had the most, you know, nodes pop off were, were the ones that, that we uh, ended up deciding upon.
Senegal video is, is uh, divided between three hard drives right now. <laughs> just a few weeks. So we did just land from Senegal three days ago. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, um, you guys have been so um, some of these questions that, that y'all are bringing up, um, as much of that, if you think of something afterwards, if you could email us stuff that you'd like to know about the program, I have no clue what I'm doing while we're traveling. We're making these music videos, and we're just making little two-minute videos about the experience. Um, last time we were here, we were just Josh made this like offhand comment, like, "Oh, I wish we knew more about the uh, people in the videos. I wish we could see." Um, see a little bit of their, their lives, and you specifically said, what do their homes look like? And I think that comment directly led to us getting invited to a Senegalese female rapper's birthday party at her house, where we all ate fish curry with our hands and, and sang with little kids crawling all over us. So, um, also the critical stuff, the, the questions trying to figure out, like, so one of the things I think we'd all like to learn is how to be better about metrics and things like that. Um, so if you have ideas for like, oh, you know, like, I wish we knew one year later if this, that, and the other. Please pass that on. And so on, on the site we have a bunch of different kinds of videos and we're just kind of making those up as we go along. So if you have, if you say, for example, ah, oh, you know, I watched your videos, but you totally left out thing Y, then when we're in Fiji in two weeks, I will shoot thing Y for you. <laughs> so um, please hit us up with uh, any feedback that you have. Yeah, and the place for that feedback would be beatmakinglab.com. There's an email address right on there. Be making loud at Gmail. Gmail. <laughs> that gets to all of us, and we'll definitely get to Celine so he can shoot your ideas. Are there any more questions? Thank you guys so much.